Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, James and Cable, and with me is David Kirkpatrick. How you doing, sir? Doing well, doing well. You? I'm doing good, and you know, I always want to talk about the weather. It really makes no use, but it was a nice rainy, then got hot day today. So yeah, a little balmy, you know, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Summertime yeah, in Kentucky. Yeah, there you go, and uh, you know, vacation looming, so uh, that's always exciting. Yes, um, but um, we got a good topic uh, to talk about. Governor Isaac Shelby. That's uh, right. Not really talked about him much here on the uh, podcast. Um, get some videos on YouTube and stuff about him uh, as far as that. But, I mean, when you're talking about Kentucky, he's he's Kentucky's George Washington, right? Yeah, he is the Kentuckian. He's my second favorite Kentuckian, so that's ranking pretty right. high. <laughs> <laughs> James Harris, number one. That's right. You, you got to go with that. <laughs> yeah. A little mild, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, he oh, – uh, very – I, I want to say exciting life. Um, uh, I, you can't say typical, but like when you're when you're talking about, um, I guess early frontiersmen, politicians of the time. You know, he kind of hit all the all the nails on the on the or the nails on the head, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he you know had a successful political career, a successful military career. Um, and you know, successful family life. If you want to, if you want to say it that way, um, and that that's kind of go ahead. No, absolutely. Just yeah, oh. uh, he, he had he had all three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a way we're kind of going to talk about, I guess, him or his life. Um, kind of talk about his family life and, and so forth. Then we'll talk about his military career, and then we'll get to the important governor stuff as far as um as far as all that goes because um. You know, as as Kentucky, I mean, he's a founding father of Kentucky, so he right. definitely gets a lot of credit, or should have a lot of credit uh, for all that stuff. And and we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, so uh, we've been talking a lot about the fr early frontiersmen. You know, James Harrod, uh, Benjamin Logan, uh, Daniel Boone, Squire Boone, so forth and and so on. And uh, oh, Governor Shelby here definitely falls into that. Uh, he. It, it, when you compare them to, say, Boone and Kenton and Herod, a little different, but 
you know, also kind of the same, I guess. Is, yeah. is that true enough? I think so. I think if you look at the state seal, you've got the statesman shaking the hand of the pioneer. Herod and Boone and those guys tend to be the pioneer. And you think of like General Wilkinson and those guys as the statesman. Shelby's both. Uh, you know, he, yeah. he he's out here in those early days, you know, farming and, and cutting out a homestead. But he, he fills the role of governor, which we'll talk about later, really, really well. And at a time when so many people ran over their head, he has a grasp on how things are going. And, uh, yeah, he, he's definitely a, a well-rounded guy. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so let's, uh, I guess, dive right into him here. Um, Isaac Shelby was born December 11th, 1750 in Hagerston, Maryland, uh, in what is now um, Washington County. Uh, what was Frederick, which we know how counties change um, mm. over, <laughs> over over time. Um, his parents were Evan and Letitia? Letitia? I always said it Letitia. Letitia. Letitia, Letitia, yeah. okay. Cox, Shelby, oh, and um, he came. His family actually came from Wales, um, and um, I think I have a typo on there because uh, 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 eighteen thirty-five doesn't make any sense. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so I'm having a typo. Uh, so his family came to Wales in seventeen thirty-five. Um, so Isaac's Isaac was a first-generation American. So you know he he. Uh, which is which is something I think is pretty cool when you think of uh, this guy as the first governor of Kentucky. He was a first generation of uh, American. Uh, uh, so yeah, his uh, parents would have been fifteen uh, when he was born. That's a bit um, young, but that's not impossible. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Even, even and, for that uh, time, yeah. really young, but not as shocking as it is today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they moved uh, around quite a bit. Uh, from Pennsylvania to Maryland, uh, and they finally kind of settled in uh, Virginia. Um, they operated a fur business. Um, however, it was kind of destroyed. It was uh, destroyed during Pontiac's War um, and so forth, which fur, fur trading, of course, was, was a pretty big um, enterprise or, or you know, economic driver for the colonists and stuff when they were settling. Um, but then they end up moving in 1772 to Bristol, Tennessee, which at the time was Bristol, Virginia, still, um, and uh, open a store and, and a fort. Um, and, and if you don't know, I'll try to give a quick geography lesson on Bristol, Tennessee, uh, for those people who uh, may not be exactly for sure. Uh, Bristol, Tennessee is pretty much uh, the eastern part of Tennessee sea on the northern border. Um, it, you know, right next to Virginia. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly small townish and, you know, the Bristol motor speedways there and all that stuff. I mean, that's what it's probably known for the most. Um, but that's, that's basically where he set his family set up shop. Um, Isaac's father was also in the military and fought in Lord Dunmore's war. And, um, Isaac actually served with his father, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Second in command for the unit, I think. So yeah, he was a, an officer at a young age. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, which we'll get to his, you know, his some of his military uh, uh, things are uh, pretty interesting. We'll get to that too. But anyway, uh, and the, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, War of 1812 is is your uh, uh, expertise, that's, right? So <laughs> that's what I'm most interested in. Anyway, I, expertise is strong, but, we'll, <laughs> but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. He did serve with his father, and then after Lord Dunmore's War, Isaac, uh, of course, stays in Kentucky, and. Uh, then you know the Battle of Kings Mountain. Uh, well, after the Battle of Kings Mountain, he moves to Kentucky. He's back and forth during that time period. He's fighting some in the Carolinas uh, and that kind of thing, which we'll talk about more later. But uh, he settles on land he receives for his service, and uh, it was located near Knob Lick, and uh, as I'm sure you will proudly say, there in Lincoln County, and uh, <laughs> a neat place. And it's a shame because the house lasted for decades, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was. There are pictures of it of, of Shelby's house, Traveler's Rest, and uh, of course, it's no longer there. It's burned. But uh, he marries Susanna Hart Shelby uh, on November first, uh, seventeen eighty-two. So he's settling into life, and uh, of course, she's the daughter of Nathaniel Hart. So the Hearts of Kentucky are well known during this early time. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he's got a settler's pedigree, as, as well as his wife <laughs> and whole family. Um, after that. First term in office, though, he retires back to Traveler's Rest and 
spends the last several years of his life there. And he retires in 1816, and he dies in 26. So he gets a, a decade or so there. So that's mm-hmm. good. Um, you know, he, he was a man of his age. So he's very prosperous. But along with that comes, uh, you know, all the trappings of that time period, owning slaves and that kind of thing. Um, he had all the signs of wealth. But uh, he really remains in the background, you know, for much of that time, only coming forward when he's needed. Uh, and of yeah. course, in, in 1820, his health kind of goes downhill. Like we said, he, he dies in 26, but um, he had some paralysis on the right side of his body and uh, still had some mobility, apparently. Uh, he pr- had practiced walking after that, I think, to some outbuildings on you know around the house and stuff and tried to regain that, but really just remained at Traveler's Rest until he passes away. And uh, the spot where you know, he first set up his tent in Kentucky was the place where he passed. So unlike so many people like Boone or Herod who either moved on or who disappeared, Shelby's there from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And his, um, you know, we're talking about traveler's rest. It's, it's a really easy place to get to, um, you know, plenty of good markers and stuff to, if you ever want to go visit, but you're talking about his house. It is, it is sad that, um, it, it wasn't restored or rebuilt or, or anything preserved from it. You know, there's the grave where he's buried and a few other graves there in that area. Uh, but there is another house that's been built there. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, um, I don't really know it. It's a nice house. It's very nice. Um, but you know, it's not, it doesn't have anything connected to, um, Shelby, it's just a rebuilt house of a house that they somebody built there. Um, wow. So it would be nice if it was, um, you know, Isaac Shelby. Style or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, yeah, you can't go back and knock on the door and say, hey, you guys care if we knock down your house and so forth. So, with, I, some, you know, somebody may not even, they may not even live there now. I don't know. This is the last time I was, I was there, which was about, uh, two years ago or so. I, I know it was occupied, obviously, but um, it's very easy to get to um, and you know, check out. It's it's worth it. You know, the little cemetery is a state park, right? I mean, it, it's called that. Yep. It's normal state, so it's it's not large, but yeah. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not big at all. I mean, I'm trying to think of something to compare it to, but maybe half of a mobile home, maybe maybe a quarter yeah. of a mobile home would be a good. Good par- comparison, I guess. Um, so yeah, that, I mean that's a pretty much like kind of the overview of his kind of family life. I mean he had he had uh, you know, multiple children and stuff, but we won't we won't get in that too much. Uh, people can look that up on Wikipedia or whatever. <laughs> yeah, big um, families. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but his military career, which is quite. Uh, interesting quite uh um honorable i guess if you want to say um he 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 is a uh legendary military figure i would say you know he he did some very very or had some very good accomplishments um and so forth but um you know as we said he he went with his father to lord (coughs) dunmore's war which began in 1774 um uh, where he was a lieutenant under his father during um, you know the campaign which which was against the Shawnee and Mingo uh, Native Americans. Um, the only major battle though was uh, was at Point Pleasant, uh, and then yeah. during that battle, Isaac led his men in a flanking maneuver that helped break up the Native American attack and led to the victory, which Isaac's. I mean that's pretty big. I mean this was you know when you think about it. Um, you know, if he had the maneuver that helped win the victory, and the, I mean, he was pretty young at that time. So, right. You think about how important the battle is. I mean, because the governor, Governor Dunmore, has recalled all those folks that have settled in Kentucky. So, Herod and Boone and those guys are all expected to come back because this is a big deal. And there's a lot resting on this. So, yeah, a lot of prestige there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which he moves on. Uh, he was a commission, commission, commissary, commissary, uh, commissary. Commissary, yeah, that's right. A commissary agent um, assigned by Patrick Henry in 1771 uh, in Kentucky. Uh, he traveled from you know post to post, gathering supplies for the frontier settlers and for the Continental Army. Because again, we talk about all these early frontiersmen and so forth. And during the middle of all this is the Revolutionary War. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and people just sometimes don't put the two together. But, you know, that's the way it went. Yeah, the folks here were watching very interestedly in what was going on back east because they knew it would take time, but eventually it was going to affect them. So, yeah, they were very much a part of it. Yeah. Um, and 1780. So, uh, well, well you, you mentioned that. Uh, when is it going to get to them? And it gets to Isaac Shelby quite quickly. Uh, he was called back to the military to serve in the American Revolution, uh, but only in the southern front. Um, mm -hmm. He gathered his frontiersmen and headed back to fight the British, you know. Uh, that was kind of the thing. Um, Shelby was actually in Kentucky doing surveys and stuff. Um, and I mean, you know, gathered up the men and uh, led uh, led them to victory at the Battle of the Thick Thickety Fort. Yes, it's, uh, it's hard to Mountain. pronounce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at <clears throat> Musgrove's Mill. Uh, but, you know, all those, you know, uh, well, I mean, I, guess, I was going to say all those important battles, but really there's one that's the most important out of all those, but we'll get to that in a second. But uh, again, pretty well. Uh, I just find it crazy to think that, you know, here in Kentucky, you know, hundreds of miles away, they get the letter saying, hey, you guys got to come back and help us with the British. Uh, and everybody's like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> right. They roll back. And you, you mentioned the Southern Front. If you have to be in the war, the Southern Front's really not where you want to be because there's a lot of loyalists still in the Southern states, in the Southern colonies. And, uh, you know, it was kind of neighbor to neighbor. And But you get so many colorful people because you get, you know, Francis Mary and the Swamp Fox and all these guys. Uh. Shelby fits well with them, his personality and this tough, gritty, uh, you know, kind of backwoodsman as opposed to someone like, you know, Benedict Arnold early in his career who was all about uniforms and that kind of thing. Uh, this is a guy in thirty war, and so Shelby fits right in. Yeah, oh yeah, the Swamp Fox man. It's a, it's a, it's another good, good uh, story. No, no real connection to Kentucky except for Marion County. That's really the only connection. But uh, uh, still, pretty, pretty interesting dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, that uh, that's kind of where he heads down to. He travels down, yep, down to Broad <laughs> River in the western part of the, uh, North Carolina. And uh, meets up with General Charles McDowell there, and uh, he leads troops in a number of small battles against the, the Tories and the British troops that are in that area. And uh, they win, you know, a lot of victories, uh, but not really any large battles. Again, you're going from post to post in the backwoods of the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. And so, they, <coughs> excuse me, they don't gain much ground uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, and once, you know, General Gates is defeated at Camden, Shelby and his men are really were forced to retreat back across the mountains because now uh, Cornwallis and his army there have nothing to get in their way. So they Shelby and uh, you know the guys that are with him, not only are they brave and capable of making decisions in the heat of the battle, they're smart enough to know when you don't risk it. And so they've retreated back across the mountain, and that's where Major Patrick Ferguson comes in. And uh, you know Ferguson, uh, inventor of the Ferguson rifle. Um, and oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, kind of a not very well received um, commander in the British Army. He had some arguments with his superiors and things, but uh, one of the problems they had with him was he was very uh, aggressive and he was very, you know, much a plain talker and tell it like it is. And in the British aristocracy, it doesn't always uh, play well. And as part of that character, as part of who he is, um, you know, he sends word that uh, you know those folks over the mountains need to stop attacking or he's going to burn their country to the ground and uh, <laughs> rather than you know intimidating these backwoodsmen uh, you know who now not only are not afraid of him but know that he's planning an expedition their way uh, you know decide to take action so Shelby and his men and he's there with John Severe so have you ever been to Severeville Tennessee uh, you know John yep. Severe is, is part of this Hollywood. yep that's right um uh, <laughs> Which is why we need a theme park in Shelby County to balance that. But that's beside the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they, they turned up recruiting, and uh, they got more mountain men and backwoodsmen. And it, it, as you said, it's amazing, not A, that anybody comes, first of all, across the mountains to fight, but the fact that you can round up hundreds of men you know, for something like this and coordinate that. Uh, but they've got a new plan, and uh, they march eastward as Ferguson's coming westward. And they meet, of course, at Kings Mountain. And this is where Shelby gets his nickname from. So this is a, a small promenade in uh, South Carolina. And, 
you know, there they met the enemy. And uh, the fighting begins October 7th of 1781. So the Patriots, you know, march up the sides of the mountain to get the high ground. And they've kind of got the initiative. And, of course, Shelby tells them uh, to give an Indian play, by which he means go from tree to rock, whatever shelter you can find, fire a shot, mm -hmm. and then move forward. Uh, the British, who are, of course, you know, regimented and outfitted and, uh, you know, in very strict British style, um, don't actually do a terrible job. I mean, they're being fired at from all directions. They're surrounded. They're in unfamiliar territory. And they force Shelby and his men back on uh, three different occasions. Now, the one thing to remember is Shelby and his guys aren't really using bayonets. So you, if someone's charging at you with a knife, you don't have a lot to go on. So you know th that's in Shelby's defense, but you know, the British forced them back, uh, you know, three separate times, and uh, the, the Americans continue to fight and, and push back up the hill again. So you know, during that time, Ferguson ends up being shot and killed, and uh, with his death, the British soldiers are just unable to keep their form, and the effort collapses. I mean, they're surrounded on all sides, and now they're without leadership, and uh, you know, the the Battle of Kings Mountain wasn't the first battle, but certainly the largest that Shelby fights into the revolution. And it kind of cements uh, his character. So you, you mentioned already that, you know, he was sent on a number of uh, missions by Patrick Henry, the governor of Virginia. At one point he's commissioned by the governor of North Carolina for stuff. So people already know Isaac Shelby, but this is the kind of thing that moves you like from man to legend. <laughs> and so his, his career is cemented and uh, in everyone's mind, and he's even nicknamed Old King's Mountain. And that's something that will stick with him even after he's governor. There are people who write letters to him and address him that way as Old King's Mountain. So uh, just a tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, it's kind of like, well, like I said, you know, cements his legacy and, uh, well, military career as well. And, and, you know, leads on to governorship and so forth as, as that kind of goes. Um, but yeah, you know, I always think of the Revolutionary War about how I always think of the Patriot, you know, the movie The Patriot, mm -hmm. um, and you know how um, you know the the thought of the British, you know, we make formal lines, we shoot, you shoot, we charge, whatever. But you know, a lot of the um, colonists or the Patriots you know, took to say Indian warfare. You know, they hid behind trees and, and rocks, and you know, fought them off that way. And that was one of the big things that happened or that um, led to victory in many occasions, you know, the British just weren't able to you know, go with that, I guess, you know, right. uh, and this, this right here was a, you know, prime example, that battle on Kings Mountain, a prime example of, you know, taking your, taking advantage of the British war machine, I guess, if you want to say it that right. way. And I think they they learned from watching the battles in the north because most of those are fought first, you know. And anytime the British are near the coast, they tend to do pretty well. But if you can get them out west, like Saratoga and western New York, things fall apart for them. So by the time the battle moves to the south, Shelby and all these guys, you know, Nathaniel Green and folks like that who are in the Southern Theater, they go, ah, now we have the key. And they had some battles <laughs> that were ready, ready, ready to take that up for them. Yeah, yeah. Um... Pretty cool. I mean, it was pretty, uh, you know, interesting as far as like, uh, just you know, again, I mean, we'll say it many times. His his kind of legacy kind of seem in it, but you know, when you think about the whole, just a summary of it all, you know, he started out working or serving under his dad, and then you know, has success from from that that soon on. Um, right. You know, really kind of creates the military prowess, I guess, um, and so forth, which leads on to bigger and, and better things. You know, I guess. Um, yeah, anything else? Uh, I mean, about his family and military, I guess, you, to throw in there. Uh, of course, if, <laughs> if you want to cover the War of 1812, we've already done that, you know, but he, he's a big role in that. So, but well, we do that. Yeah, we'll, 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 that that's tied into the politics of it, too. Because, okay, you know, okay. the whole war, yeah. Because <laughs> that, you know, well, we'll get to that. Let's, let, let's, hold, let's hold, our, hold our horses. Uh, anyway, so the politics. Um, all this is going on. Um, and, of course, his political career. Um, he, you know, he served in Virginia, North Carolina's governments um, in the 1780s, all while the Revolutionary War is going on as well. And I always kind of wonder how how you would even be able to manage that to be fighting a war and holding political office, um, which a lot of the revolutionarists, revolutionists, you know, a lot of them did, you know, right. <laughs> a bunch of them did. Um, 
but uh but once he arrived in kentucky um his military service and uh you know rep- reputation you know, increased his political capital i mean you know it's exactly what you would want war hero um you know he has some wealth uh, you know not right. sit there and say he's like super wealthy but you know he had land um he um you know, had all the all the checks, all the box checked, all the boxes checked. So, um, you know, kind of the ideal candidate, I guess. Um, but you know, he participated in the Constitutional Convention of uh, for Kentucky. Um, he was also kind of a big force, say, um, campaigning or pushing for Kentucky to become a, a state and separating from Virginia, um, which a lot of the early pioneers, frontiersmen. We're behind that, you know that that we've talked about the for, before the extent the extension of representation and having to go to Williamsburg and stuff. It just yeah. wasn't feasible, and it did not help out the frontiersmen at all. Um, but you know, he he uh, was a big proponent of breaking that tie. You know, nothing against Virginia, but it's just logistics, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Mountains are tough um, to cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. He, in, in early Kentucky pol- politics, uh, the people elected representatives, um, and then those um, electors would, would would vote on senators and governors and so forth. But um, he was kind of set up pretty well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, he's a lot like you mentioned earlier. He, he'd been a lot like Washington. And another way he's like Washington is Shelby doesn't really seek. The office of governor because in back then you, you didn't want to do that a lot because it made you appear greedy and you didn't run and things so but with his military pedigree and prowess he all he really had to do was not say he won't not say he wouldn't do it you know <laughs> yeah. uh, and on june 1st 1792 he was unanimously elected um by the electors as the first governor of kentucky and so no real competition there um mm-hmm. and you know he, he wasn't big on political drama uh, he, he didn't like political games and that kind of thing. And if you ever look at the portrait of Shelby, and listen, I know in the 1800s and 1700s, being serious, you know, doing a portrait sitting was a big deal. But Shelby scowls. Like, you know, we don't have a lot of pictures. <laughs> there you go. If you look yeah. at him, this is not the guy you want to sit across the table from and try to work out some politically savvy deal. He's, he's there to accomplish something. He's there to do good by the people of the state. And that was it, you know, so <laughs> engaged in the political games. Um, there's really, again, no evidence he sought to be governor. Uh, but when he was called on, he did it. So um, his military experience, you know, probably gave him the office. I think most people agree with that because defense of the frontier was what Kentuckians were concerned about the most. Mm-hmm. And if you read what happens in Ohio and Indiana, in the, what's called the old Northwest Territory in the 1790s, so that first decade of Kentucky's history, I mean, it's a, a wild and dangerous place. And so having someone who's got some military experience, you know, is always a plus. So um, yeah, he was a Jeffersonian Republican, um, but he really, if you had to peg him as something, that's what he would be. But he really had yeah. little interest in, in politics. And, um, you know, he, he wasn't big on speeches and he, he tended to speak directly. Uh, it, you know, a lot of his speeches are recorded in uh, acts of general assembly or things like that. So, you can read them and he, he doesn't mince words. So um, <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't have really a charismatic personality. Um, so you, you think about people that, that are famous today from that time period. So, uh, you know, everyone loved Alexander Hamilton, you know, who's yeah. Yeah. big words and terribly smart and very flamboyant or, you know, or Ben Franklin's doing all these experiments and things that people that's, that stick out because of those things. That's not Shelby at all. You know, when he walked into a room, he commanded the respect of the people there. And his primary focus was just honoring people's property and making sure everything that, that were was part of their rights um, was protected and secured. So he, he had a mission and he did it well. Yeah. Well, yeah. And like, it, it is very true. Like, I mean, the, you know, you say picture, you know, tells a thousand words or says a thousand words. His picture does. It, it says a lot. I mean, he is, uh, <laughs> he's not um, going to beat around the bush. He's going to say, you know, this is what we want. And, and, you know, not to, not to harp on, you know, politicians and stuff, but, you know, as a, just a person in general, I, you know, I get so frustrated with just looking at 
and listening to politicians about anything. You know, I'm just thinking like, oh, like you, you know, just tell me what, what, what is it? What is the real goal here? You know, uh, right. get, get to the point. Um, and, and it's so, it's so hard not to be like, there's a, there's something else going on, you know, but, I mean, and that's just about anything, you know, it'd be like, you know, what, what's, what's behind this, you know, but you know, you have to, you know, do what you can, I guess, but, <laughs> um, having more politicians like Isaac Shelby, I think would probably be best, you know, because oh, yeah. this is, you know, you know, this is what, I, this is what we need to do, how we can do it. You know, this is what's best for the people, how are we going to do it? You know, and, and I, I feel like that's kind of, the way he was and which oh, yeah. was good we're going to stop right here with our discussion about isaac shelby the first and fifth governor of kentucky again I want to thank david for coming on and joining us and thanks again for listening we'll see you next time welcome to the kentucky history channel where we strive to bring you all the kentucky history content you want and you deserve kentucky is a part of all of us and we plan on covering all the history we can from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel. The stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. the assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.